In the last sessions, we have discussed about the diseases of the esophagus. The next is about the diseases of the stomach. Now, among the diseases of the stomach, uh, there is a very um, a perfect description of the shut kriya kala. So, from that point of view, I will be dealing with these diseases of the stomach in the light of the kriya kalas. Now, first of the kriya kala, as we know, is uh, the dosha vruti. And Tata Sanjita Nam Kalosanam Sabha Purna Kostada, Sabha Purna Kostada, Pita Vasana, Mundosh Madhatanga Nam Gauru Marasinja, Chaya Karna Vidvesha Stedu Lingani Bhavati. Now, this is something which is uh, experienced by everyone on some days, every day, like rather, which could be due to a minor variations in the food substance, where the patient would have a flatulence, and that flatulence or gaseous distension is a established this is diagnosed entity even the even the icd code it uh, differentiates these different uh, conditions of the platelets platelets and related conditions are coded as r14 and among them that gaseous distension is uh, coded as r141 r140 and gas pain is 141 and so on so that uh, gaseous distension or stadha purna kostada is a established clinical entity and which is often produced due to minor variations in the food and almost everyone experiences. There may not be a, a established um, pathological changes. See, that's the issue. Patholo visible pathological changes may not be there. Now, among the gaseous distension, there is one more called, uh, condition called as psychogenic aerophagy, where a person, psychologically affected person, would be going on swallowing the air and that produces the distension. Of course, that's excluded from the gaseous distension as such, which is a totally different pathology. Now, as such, in such conditions, the treatment point of view, from the treatment point of view, virtually there is no need of medical intervention. Simple uh, remedies, household remedies, like, see, the most important is uh, avoid that variations in the food. Be careful about the food. And uh, maybe if at all you have eaten a bit more on Monday, just a fasting, that's their Karnal Besha. Uh, a fasting for another one schedule would be good enough for that and there is virtually no need of any medical treatment. If at all there is a need for treatment, it may be the household remedies like ginger, pepper, or cumin, pudina, <coughs> warm water, etc. They could be prescribed uh, and which is a very common issue. If at all there is a need for medicines, now meta attempts, when you are a medical practitioner, if you do not prescribe any medicine, patient may not be satisfied. So, I may prescribe Agni Tundi, Sudha Shekara or Avipatikara depending upon the clinical presentations, maybe for one or two days, not more than that. So, that's a condition which is pure, perfectly reversible and uh, a transient condition where there are no organic pathologies. The next is about the situation where there would be a Jutia uh, Kriyakara. Now, this is a situation where the patient would have, see, clinical symptoms of heartburn and nausea vomiting. These are common in almost every gastric diseases, diseases of the stomach. And uh, the differentiation of these from the other conditions is often difficult. So, uh, it's a, a careful history evaluation and a careful clinical assessment would be good enough to make out the diagnosis as such. Rarely you may do a specific investigation. Of course, technologically, to make the diagnosis of a situation where the motility of the stomach is affected. See, the trachopa is, I would consider this as an effect, uh, impairment of the motility of the stomach. Now, all that Shatriya Kala in relation to the gastric disorders, and just not, I am not saying that every disease uh, would have the same presentation, but about the coastal, the, uh, the coastal to the Sancharana, huh? Sancharana, abnormalities of the stomach, uh, movements of the stomach. Now, among them, one of that condition is a uh, gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is uh, uh, starting from a mild situation where the 
peristaltic movement of the stomach could be sluggish to a very severe condition where there could be a total paralysis. Now, I am not going to that condition where there will be a total paralysis, but very commonly we see it is in old age patients, patients with the other systemic pathologies like diabetes or hypothyroidism, patients who had undergone abdominal surgeries, patients who had an acute infective pathology, patients who are on antidepressants or narcotics, systemic conditions like the scleroderma, many of the neurological disorders like Parkinson's conditions, and in general, women are more likely to develop gastroparesis than men. So that's about the general <coughs> background of the condition of gastroparesis. And uh, the clinical symptom would be heartburn and uh, or acid reflux like now acid reflux heartburn we have discussed already in case of the esophageal pathology so the same esophageal symptoms may occur in case of a gastroparesis too but the basic difference in a esophageal GRD and that gastroparesis is in the gastroparesis the peristaltic waves would be sluggish which is quite difficult to differentiate clinically you may need that a sophisticated investigation of studying the peristaltic movement of the stomach may not be a practical issue. So that you need to be, uh, make the diagnosis based upon that history of coexisting conditions like other uh, conditions and somewhat more frequent vomiting. And uh, uh, the, again, the uh, one of the characteristic signs of the paralysis is uh, a vomiting of the food which was taken much earlier. See, in general, in case of acute gastritis, which we are going to discuss later on, the patient would omit on the food immediately. Whereas, if the patient retains the food for hours together and then omits out, it could be a sign of gastroparesis. Of course, in case of a pyloric stenosis, where there is a complete obstruction, it is beyond that gastroparesis condition, patient may omit on the food which was eaten a day earlier also. So, based upon that history, that part of the history, where the food omitted out, vomitus containing the food which was taken much earlier could be one of the important clinical clue to suspect the gastroparesis and a patient who would have a full feeling of fullness immediately, quickly. You will have plenty of such patients who complain of the same, like eating a small quantity of the food produces a feeling of fullness. That's also a sign of gastroparesis, a bloating sensation, belching, and weight loss or malnutrition also can be one of the signs. Blood sugar levels being higher also is one of the clues to make the diagnosis of gastroparesis. Usually, the best advice to these patients of gastroparesis is not directly a medical intervention. Instead, the usual advice would be eat smaller meals instead of three meals a day, have five or six meals, smaller meals, two of the day, by which the nourishment can be maintained and the symptoms can be reduced. And the uh, uh, advice to chew the food slowly and completely so that the load on the stomach could be lesser and uh, preferably cooked vegetables and fruits than raw. That's the advisable to patients with paralysis. High fiber vegetables and fruits to see. Generally, in the patients with gastrointestinal tract abnormality, you would be advising high fiber di diets and uh, fruits. That's a general advisement. But uh, in the patients of gastroparesis, better to reduce or avoid them. Fatty foods like uh, also have to be avoided uh, uh, and uh, the, the uh, we were, food should be, of course, it should be a, a cooker well, pre is a, a cooker well and liquids are e which are swallowed and they should be you know, preferable than the solids. And uh, plenty of water you should consider and uh, exercise like bath, avoid alcohol, smoking or carbonated beverages and another is to try not to lie down within two hours of eating. These are the general advice in patients of gastroparesis. If at all there is a need for medicines, now I will be prescribing Almidrini, Bodhani, Avipatikara, considering this as a, the Prakopita Dosha Chikitsa, Prakopita Vata Dosha Chikitsa. Now, the variations of this movement of the stomach, another of the condition is a what you call dumping syndrome. It's a very unique condition, which also is uh, the cost of the sanjarana abnormality. There is some abnormality of the movement of uh, the food and the nourishment in the stomach. Now, in case of a gastroparesis, there is a reduction of peristaltic movement, whereas in a dumping syndrome, 
there is an abnormality of the absorption mechanism. The dumping syndrome initially was considered to be a complication of the gastric surgery. But now it, we know that there are plenty of patients who have dumping syndrome like symptoms even without the gastric surgeries. See, earlier gastrostomy surgeries or gastrodegenostomy like surgeries would always result in a dumping syndrome if the anastomosis is not proper. If the short, the proximal loop has become bigger, then dumping syndrome, and there the dumping syndrome was classified as early and later. That, but now it's now well known that the dumping syndrome would occur even in those patients who have not undergone surgery, and it's considered to be one of the abnormality of the metabolism as such. Primarily, the basic issue in a case of dumping syndrome is in a normal situation, the food in the stomach would be homogenized, it will be garbled, mixed with the acid and the secretions of the stone as well as the water consumed and at the end of that phase of gastric phase of the digestion, the food is converted into a homogeneous semi-liquid form from where the absorption can be smooth and hence there will be a osmotically balanced situation, the osmotic pressure of the food contained in the jejunum or the, the uh, further uh, uh, distal area, ileum also, should not be more than that of uh, the osmotic pressure of uh, the blood plasma. And then only the fluid and the nourishment can be absorbed. If due to any condition, if the osmotic pressure of the contents of the gastrointestinal tract, the contents of the jejunum or the ileum, the absorptive areas, would be higher than that of uh, the osmotic pressure of the plasma, a hyperosmolar food content, can result in a reverse osmosis. The instead of the fluid water getting absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, the food in the stomach, uh, food in the uh, jejunum and the ileum, the absorptive area, would be resulting in a reverse osmosis where the fluid may be leaking from the body into the Intestines. Though the pathology occurs in the jejunum, the disease is primarily because of the stomach because it is the basic responsibility of the stomach, function of the stomach to ensure that the contents which reach to the jejunum are homogenized and the osmolarity is maintained. So dumping syndrome, though the pathology is in the absorptive area of jejunum and the ileum, the disease is attributed to the stomach because there is an abnormality of the gastric function. Now, the clinical symptoms in the dumping syndrome occur would be, see, after the consumption of the food, usually, ideally, you should feel more energetic and more active and uh, somewhat comfortable. But if the person, after consumption of the food, develops a desire to lie down, palpitations, fatigue or fainting, at times zinco or at times it could be shock even. Patients may go into shock even, particularly in uh, Postoperative patients, patients who have undergone uh, these gastrointestinal patients, these, it can result in a shock-like condition, not simply syncope. Such a situation, excess of sweating, headache, or even flushing could occur in such symptoms. This is what one calls early symptoms, early dumping syndrome. <coughs> and the other symptoms which may occur could be epigastric fullness, diarrhea, nausea pain in the abdomen or barbering me, loud sounds after the consumption of the food also could be the clinical symptoms seen in case of the dumping syndrome. And uh, in the later symptoms, later signs would be perspiration, shakiness, difficulty to concentrate, uh, decreased consciousness uh, or hunger also could occur much later up to about 48 hours of the food. Majority of the patients would have the early symptoms where the symptoms would occur within 15 to 20 minutes of consumption of the food and last for one to two hours. In a few patients, it may occur much later and the symptoms may occur even after 48 hours of the consumption of the food and that would be quite difficult to diagnose. The late uh, dumping syndrome is quite difficult to diagnose but that too can be a clinical symptom as such. The basic pathology as I told you would be the in the uh, because the stomach gets emptied from the uh, sorry, food gets emptied from the stomach rapidly it can result in a, either situation of a hyperosmolar jejunal kind that is contained in the jejunum good hyperosmolar 
and it can result in the sequestration of the fluid from the body and hence the blood volume could be reduced, hypertension, tachycardia could be the symptoms because the uh, water is absorbed from the system into the intestine, the intestine will be distended, results in abdominal pain, diarrhea like conditions and uh, because the hormones are not response, uh, secreted properly, the hormones support the digestion, they are not absorbed, uh, secreted properly, there could be vasomotor symptoms like hypertension or the other gastrointestinal symptoms and the glucose absorption in the gastrointestinal this, uh, dumping syndrome would occur either very rapidly or slow. Many times it will be slow. See, usually after consumption of the food, your blood glucose level tends to raise and then after a few hours it comes back to the normal. But in a patient of dumping syndrome, it is the reverse. The patient would have a hypoglycemia immediately after the food. The sugar level may be reduced immediately after the food and then after a few hours it may increase. It results in the inappropriate insulin secretions and often you will be considering this as a, the variations of the diabetes mellitus and unnecessary treatment are done and the incidence of the dumping syndrome is not a rare situation, it can occur quite frequently and particularly in these days when the people are uh, uh, having that busy life where the patient, uh, pers uh, people do not have sufficient relaxation time at all and they have a, a very, very busy life, the incidence of this would be more and it's increasing somewhat more significantly as such. So that's why I'm giving more uh, stress on these dumping syndrome symptoms. Maybe many of you may have the, have these symptoms also. It's quite uh, common, right? And in these conditions, the advice would be more than the medical treatment, virtually in the modern science point of view, there is virtually no medical treatment except advices like uh, 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 this energy intake of the food has to be divided into six meals so that the total quantity of the food consumed is lesser. Same advices which are applicable in case of the gastroparesis like uh, having more fluid and uh, uh, chewing the food better and avoiding the, these uh, fatty contents as well as direct sugars could be avoided in these uh, conditions of dumping syndrome. And usually patients would not tolerate milk and milk products uh, and if at all, uh, it's also, it may be necessary that it can be reduced. But milk is a good nourishment, so you need to give the milk. And uh, the milk may be given in some other form, like maybe the tea, coffee and so on, which may be tolerated better. So you will have to be you know, very careful about the selection of the food in patients of the dumping syndrome. Carbohydrates have to be restricted, protein and fat have to be increased. Dietary fiber may be enhanced, right? unlike that of gastroparesis in these conditions, dietary fiber content could be enhanced. Then uh, most of the patients have relatively mild symptoms and respond well to the dietary manipulations. And uh, only in those patients who have a severe postprandial hypotension or uh, they, uh, in such conditions, lying supine for 30 minutes after meals may help in uh, resolving the symptoms as such. Uh, whenever there is a need for prescription of such patients, I will be prescribing this with the Arogyavardini Kamaduga Draksha Rishta, which is considered, I would consider this as a, a Pitta Vikriti, a abnormality of a Pitta Drushti or Pitta Prakopa as such. Now, the gastroesophageal reflux symptoms and dumping syndrome now is increasing rapidly and among the different nations where you have this kind of dumping and gastroesophageal abnormalities, total functions abnormalities, India is one of the areas where it is very high and the reasons attributed are mainly the lack of physical activity among the youth which is widespread, which is well known now, the, particularly in India, 72% of the boys have insufficient active and this is studied in 2016 and uh, uh, this is a WHO study report where this said that urgent action is needed to increase the physical activity levels in girls and boys aged 11 to 17 years younger age. This is the exact point which need to be highlighted and lack of exercise is the most important cause for both gastroparesis as well as the dumping syndrome conditions and that insufficient physical activity in the adolescence is one of the 
basic issue for many of the diseases as it. That's one. The other is about the fast food. The culture of the fast food is the other reason for these development incidents of these conditions quite frequently. And the, unfortunately, the market of this uh, Indian fast food market is uh, increasing very rapidly and it's one of uh, the very well organized and uh, very profitable market. So, from the point of view of maintenance of the health, this culture has to be avoided. Physical activity has to be improved and that culture of uh, fast food has to be avoided. Anyway, that's one part. The next part is about the prasarana. Prasara of the uh, condition where Evam Prakutitanam Prasaratam Vayoho Vimargagama Atoho Vosha Chosha Paridaha Dhumayanani Pritasya Arotha Gavipaka Angasada Chardishtya Dishreshman Olingani Bhavanti Nata Tritiya Kalaha Tritiya Kriya Kalaha And of course the, all that description variations of uh, the multiple variations of the prasara where you will have uh, the different weight combinations of the doshas. Now the same is uh, considered as uh, the dyspepsia condition or arojaka from our point of view. That arojaka is one of the predominant symptoms, sign of these conditions. There again, you will have all that combination, combinations of the dwanda doshas or the doshas like variety. Now, dyspepsia as such also is a ICD code with a specified disorder where dyspepsia of and other specified disorders are coded as 536.8. So, in issue is purpose of referring to this is earlier dyspepsia was considered as a symptom and it was not considered as a diagnosis but now with the ICD-10 it is accepted as a diagnosis and uh, hence it has to be uh, treated as such. Now from ironic point of view the arrojaka could be of different varieties. A simple arrojaka which is of a short duration one of that condition. All Sanipatiyan Nasa, Santapiyan Chapanjama, Arojaka could occur due to the abnormalities, abnormalities of Jifwa, the tongue or the mouth itself. Maybe those who are not maintaining the hygiene of the mouth properly or some abnormalities of the oral itself are there. That's your emotions. If you are not uh, not having that good mood for the food. Manasat Sandhapena, that's even for the distress of the psyche, also can result in the uh, arojaka, and this is what we call as a psychogenic conditions, or maybe simple uh, conditions uh, where the patient may temporarily feel like uh, he may not like the food for today, and certain tastes of the food may not be appreciated, but not very severe. Such are the conditions, they do not require any treatment. Overnight fasting or very light food will do. If at all there is a need for medicines, again as I told you, there is no need of medicines. If at all there has to be a need for medicines, I will be prescribing Avipathika Churna or Hingvastaka Churna. Of course, there is a typing error. If it will be Hingvastaka Churna, G uh, is missing. So anyway, that could be given as such. Now, dyspepsia or Arotaka with the Avipaka, the next level of the dyspepsia. From the contemporary science point of view, use the same word dyspepsia. But from our dosha, dosha point of view, these could be of different degrees of dyspepsia, and that different degrees of dyspepsia are mentioned with the arojaka and avipaka. The avipaka would be where there is a definite abnormality of the process of digestion along with the dyspepsia symptoms. And that's doshehi prasak saha chitta vipariyacha bhaktaya reshu hridicha avatate pragadam. Avipaka also is called as Bhaktopagata and this again the causes are the same like Chitta Vipari area, Bhakta Yadarishu, abnormality of the areas of gastrointestinal tract. The clinical symptoms of this would be of different variety. In Vahataja, Hrithshula Pedaritum Virasana Tum Vahatmake Bhotiringa Malochaketu. These uh, differentiations are important from the clinical point of view, and uh, I will be highlighting another important issue which is related to that. So, these descriptions of uh, the Dosha Lakshara, Hrithshula Pedaritum, in case of Vahataja, the Rajaka, Hrita Hachosha Bhuta, that's the burning sensation, Mukhatik Tadacha, Murcha, Sasur Bhoti, Pitagrita Seva. Pitta variety that Pitta Lakshana are seen in case of this burning sensation. 
ಕಂಡು ಗುರುತ್ವ ಕಫ ಸಂಸರ್ಗ ಆದ್ರಿಂದ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿನ್ ಹೆವಿನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲೆಟಾರ್ಜಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಿಂಟಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಪಜ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮಕ ಕೋನ ಪಿಪ್ಪ ಕಪ ಭೂ ನಿರೂಪಾಣಿ ಅಥ ಹೃದಯ ಸುಮುಗಿರಯಂತಿ ಸಂಭ್ರಾವ ಶೋಕ ಭಯ ವಿಕೃತ ಚೇತಸ್ತು ಚಿಂತಾಕೃತಿ ಸೊ ಅಶುಚಿ ದರ್ಶನ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದ ಇಸ್ ಅಜಿಕಲ್ ಒರಿಜಿನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ನಾವು ಐ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಅನದರ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ನಾವು ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೇಶಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಪ್ಸಿಯ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎ ರಿಯಲ್ ಟ್ರಬಲ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ವಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಪ್ಸಿಯ ದಟ್ ಅರೋಚಕ ಅರು ಅವಿಭಾಕ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಕರ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಗೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೊಮಕ್ ದಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ದ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಈಸ್ in adults of primary care the, if the patient has dyspepsia the general rule is most patients of dyspepsia can manage without investigation indication for referral is based on only the alarm signs the alarm signs in case of dyspepsia are if the patient has signs of gastrointestinal tract bleeding or if there is a progressive weight loss or progressive dyspepsia or progressive vomiting and patient has iron deficiency anemia or if there is a palpable epigastric mass these are the indications for endoscopy gastroscopy all patients of dyspepsia need not be uh, investigated with the gastroscopy this is the advised protocol general guidelines in the management but what happens is uh, in the routine practice every patient presenting with that uh, chronic dyspepsia would be subjected to the endoscopic investigation now that's another part but another important part which is very relevant from whatever we have discussed from my medical point of view is uh, the dyspepsia management technique or protocol again by the suggested by the gastroenterology clinics of north america a very authentic source for gastroenterology management now i'm stressing upon this point because the uh, whatever the concepts of dosha they are very much relevant here dyspepsia with the no alarm symptoms where there is no need for a biopsy etc that's where the endoscopy is not indicated the management principle which is given by the american i repeat that american clinics of gastroenterology which is a very high authority for the gastroenterology that the management is based upon the clinical symptoms of a predominant heartburn conditions and with the nausea and vomiting postprandial distress syndrome which is where there is a gastric emptying abnormality or epigastric pain syndrome where the patient may have uh, the symptoms of distension due to certain uh, specific causes then now the important point which is to be understood is uh, in case of that predominant heartburn nausea vomiting this is exactly what the pitta the variety of uh, the ajirna or arojaka is mentioned or avimaka is mentioned and the prescription in the modern side is a lifestyle modification proton pump inhibitors or antiemetic drugs are given but from our point of my prescription would be sudha shekara now another it practically clinical important issue is that many of the patients who have this kind of dyspepsia it's uh, they proton pump inhibitor related conditions are there now this is a very important point of course we, i will be dealing with this issue later on when we go further into the rest of gastric abnormality see persons who consume proton pump inhibitor drugs like uh, omeprazole uh, irregularly and without any specific need they tend to develop the abnormalities of the stomach uh, later on when we go into the gastroscopy findings i will show you some pictures of uh, that uh, proton pump inhibitor induced the gastric changes too even in those patients where there may not be a changes in the mucosa of the stomach patients may develop dyspepsia symptoms due to proton pump inhibitor now it's a very important issue proton pump inhibitors which are generally prescribed as a remedy for the dyspepsia conditions persons who consume proton pump inhibitor irrelevantly those who keep omeprazole tablets in their pocket they tend to develop these uh, uh, compl- uh, symptoms of dyspepsia quite frequently and uh, this is one of the conditions and this is exactly what's mentioned in case of uh, the pitta the variety of uh, the uh, uh, avipaka 
and my prescription would be sudha shekara or arogya vardhini very specifically in patients who have that history of consuming proton pump inhibitors regularly where really it clicks well so the, it's a very important clinical clue uh, which is based upon my clinical experience patients who have been developed that gastric symptoms due to consumption of proton pump inhibitor regularly they may not respond well to the sudha shekara but with arogya vardhini they respond well so arogya vardhini kamaduga godan ke prathigare is a usual prescription whereas in the patients who have the symptoms of epigastric pain syndrome so the patients who have the pain in the epigastric area uh, this this part postprandial syndrome i believe it has been present then the it's the typical picture support water the condition where the patient would have a pain epigastric pain conditions uh, symptoms and uh, uh, as the clinical symptom of a distress that's exactly how school appear in them now you look at this the gastroenterology clinic of america which has classified the same clinical symptoms are there in a adult text copyright issue who has to copy, uh, have that uh, uh, issue and the treatment suggested in the contemporary system is a antidepressant and behavioral suggestions as such and my prescription in this condition would be agni tundi sudha shekara godanya vidhatika now postprandial distress syndrome conditions where the patient would have a distress in the abdomen after consumption of the food and there is a abnormality i would be categorized him as adirna now that postprandial distress syndrome again further classified into the same now it is a continuation of the same protocol uh, and uh, is uh, as such it is categorized into three categories with the delayed gastric emptying accelerated gastric emptying and normal gastric emptying now this has something related to what we discussed in the dumping syndrome and the uh, gastroparesis even gastroparesis is a variation of the delayed gastric emptying where the patient would have a pain in the abdomen after about 3 hours of the food and the patient may have a constipation whereas accelerated gastric emptying where the patient would have pain in the abdomen immediately after the food and may have an urge for defecation within a short period and normal gastric emptying it's usually the patient would have a, in general reduced volume food the patient uh, volume of the food would not be tolerated the, the moment the patient consumes the food the patient would have a distress this is the usual description of this now the same in ayurvedic text is described in the adirna variety as adirnam bishtabdam vidabdam te virtam vishuti arasakam tasmat bhavet japi vilambika see vishuti arasata vilambika delayed gastric emptying vilambika vishuti arasaka where it's accelerated gastric emptying vishtabd and vidabd then there is a abnormality of the radiation it's a important thing like the same description which is a, a standard protocol of the uh, gastroenterology clinic of north america is the mention is the fact which is mentioned in the ayurvedic text uh, that, that's the important issue now clinical symptoms in case of uh, the aster variety would be कंसीडरिंग दिस कंडीशंस in these conditions my prescription should be sukha shekara ananda bhiru vibhu nimbadi kvata musakarista smriti sagara sa occasion sos in such patients may be given that's uh, the ex- exactly the variety of the adirna where you will have uh, the clinical symptoms of uh, the r- rapid gastric emptying then 
the patients with normal gastric emptying is a the best of the condition in the best of the jirna uh, of course these are the clinical symptoms of vidagdha jirna in the best of the jirna dushtam the bhuktam kapam altabhyam pravartate na urdhum adhashtesya vilambitam tam drushe dushtikitsyam uh, avakshate ta shastra vidam purana uh, of course vilambika where the movement is uh, slower and the patient would have a distension that's exactly what we see in case of uh, the normal gastric emptying conditions as such and in these conditions again my treatment would be almost the same as that of uh, the delayed gastric emptying albuterol diaragorni a kumari also may be prescribed with this the important is with this the results would be much better than the proton pump inhibitor and that total uh, protocol which is suggested there but most important point which is mentioned by sushuda is a नताम परिमिताहारा हा लबंते विस्तारम हा मुड़ा हा ताम मधितात मान हा लबंते करुषाशय हा दोस हु हैव टेक केयर ऑफ़ द फूड एंड हैव लिमिटेड अमाउंट ऑफ़ द फूड एंड दे फॉलो द फूड रेस्ट्रिक्शंस प्रॉपरली विद द प्रूफल नॉलेज विजित आदमा हा दे विल नेवर डेवलप दिस कंडीशंस इम्पोर्टेंट सो इस ए प्रॉपर प those persons who develop these conditions, Sushudha has named them as Mudhaha, Ajitatmanaha, the very selected words to scold, scold. They are ignorant people and they who do not, who do not have a self-control, Ajitatmanaha. They only develop these uh, diseases and this results in Kalusha Ashayaha, abnormalities of the organs as such. Anyway, that's one of the states. The next stage is the sthanasamdhaya, where there is an abnormality of the organ, karusha ashaya, ashaya becomes karusha. And that's evam prakupitam tam tam sharira pradesha nagamya tam tam yajin janayanti, there will be named disease which could be named as sushudha has mentioned, gurma vidra dudara agni sandhaya anaha vishu chikati sara prakupitin janayanti. Now when there is a visible abnormality of the sona, where when you do the gastroscopy, you will see the hemorrhagic conditions. Among them, the first of the condition which we consider is uh, the gastritis. See, generally, uh, the gastritis is categorized as an uh, acute and chronic. I will come to that part also. But uh, in the, uh, there is one intermediary changes, or another way of classifying the gastritis. That uh, another way of classifying the gastritis should be by looking at the changes in the stomach when you do the gastroscopy. And among them, uh, we generally group them into irrestrictively acute or chronic. Now, don't be confused with these words. Acute gastritis, the causes are a short duration of the stress. Chronic gastritis, where there is a obvious changes in the stomach due to a long duration. Duration is not very obvious as it, but usually when it is about two to three months, then we consider them as a, a chronic gastritis. Now, in irrespective of the acute or chronic, the changes within the stomach may be categorized into primarily the three categories, which is based upon my clinical observations, non-hemorrhagic or non-erosive, early changes, where there may not be much of a change in the stomach, the only that mucosal pores become more prominent, peristalsis may be somewhat rapid, this is the typical condition which you see, and you see a large number of patients of this category, and they are at that my prescription will be Arnitun Nijera Katharista or Albutika Churna depending upon the other presentations of the patient. The next variety is the erosive gastritis. Now these are all the findings which you may see when you do the gastroscopy in the uh, hospital. Uh, the variations, of course from the contemporary point of view, all of them are categories of gastritis and the protocol of the treatment will be almost same except in certain conditions there is a difference in the protocol. Otherwise, all gastritis, they are treated in the same category. But ayurvedic treatment, you can make out that difference based upon the dosha lakshanas. So dosha lakshanas are relevant even in case of the gastroscopy. In these conditions, you will have more of the pitta lakshana as in erosive gastritis. I will be prescribing sutsekara, kamaduga, bhunibadi, kwata or ayurvedicara depending upon the other presentations. Then isonophilic gastritis is one more of the condition which earlier was relatively rare. But these days it's increasing. The incidence of eosinophilic gastritis also is increasing, where the patient would have a symptom of more of that uh, visceral the bloating sensation, 
and uh, reduce the hepatite vitalization where the mucosal surface shows the granular changes multiple nodular changes and at times there will be some areas of bald atrophy mild atrophy and uh, the uh, granular changes in some areas and the one of the characteristic symptom of eosinophilic gastritis clinically would be patient would have that history of uh, the symptoms developing in relation to a specific variety of the food some may say that it is due to certain specific food some may say that it is uh, due to milk some may say that it is due to certain vegetable and so on so that kind of a history is characteristic and usually they would have a bloating sensation more than the pain and that's the usual symptom of the gastritis of eosinophilic gastritis so if you make the diagnosis of eosinophilic gastritis i would be prescribing chitragadhin vastaka considering this as a kapaja or kapaja variety or kumari asava musagarisa depending upon whether the patient have constipation or the free movement of the bowel so concept of vistabdha viradha jirna or vatadya pitaja kapaja variety of doshas they are very relevant and they can be made out with the, the gastroscopy assay now that's a, one of the important observation now i just go to from the theory point of view the acute gastritis the moment the person has the symptoms of acute gastritis acute gastritis is characterized by pain vomiting of short duration the changes which are seen in the gastroscopy could be mild erosion superficial erosion or mucosal erythema mild erythema may not be much of course from the standard guidelines they are not they do not need that uh, endoscopic investigation but you may get the picture now and causes for that acute gastritis are uh, mainly among the conditions whom we see the most common uh, causes are uh, no, uh, drugs patients who are on many medical treatment like and among those drugs which produce these uh, acute gastritis the most frequent is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs pain killers so called or uh, those treat drugs which are used for fever or dolo and so on so, so that's the most common in cause for the uh, acute gastritis then cocaine like drugs which are used in the treatment of cough syrup iron which is used in the treatment of anemia these are the common conditions which we see and uh, the other chemotherapy drugs of course comparatively less common uh, not so much important issue but from the point of view of the drugs which produce these these are uh, the common cause the next important common cause for the gastrointestinal tract pathology gastritis is uh, alcoholic beverage different sorts of alcoholic beverage and it's often claimed that whiskey vodka and gin such which are, are often consumed dry they are more common for these uh, conditions then the bacterial infections of course so, you know, h pylori which is i will i will deal with that h pylori separately so that's the another cause infective pathologies compared to less causes the viral infection cytomegalovirus also is well known and uh, these are relatively less common conditions stress acute stress is another of the condition which can produce acute gastritis which is often presented in the different presentations i will stress induced gastritis and ulcers i will be dealing with separately then allergy to food poisoning allergy and food poisoning also is another cause which often ends up in uh, the eosinophilic gastritis biliary reflux absence of the biliary reflux also can be a cause for the gastritis treatment like radiation could be a cause for the gastritis very rarely ischemia of the stomach blood flow to the stomach could be reduced or injury to the stomach they are relatively rare conditions now from ayurvedic point of view how to deal with it and uh, this uh, issue should be it is it's the same thing in brief what i have told in the first three images is the same but in somewhat more detail and uh, uh, in relation what we see with the acute gastric ulcers or acute gastric erosions in that the duration is short the usually there would be a history like a history of irritant substances and the relations with the food is uh, not very consistent even whether the patient takes uh, uh, so called spicy food or non spicy the patient may develop the symptoms less frequent vomiting irregular appetite are the typical features of uh, a acute erosion gastritis or erosive gastritis that's exactly what's mentioned in case of vatraja variety of uh, the shula adhana ato to binmutra vibandha arati vedane hi stigda usno upashama prayam vatkam tadvade bhushaka patajashula like condition and my treatment in these condition to be 
Agni Tundi, Chitrakadi, Avi Pratikara and the duration minimum would be 3 months because once there is a erosion you need to treat that for a longer duration. Then the Pitaja variety where the patient would have a deep ulcer with bleeding and one of the varieties is the curling ulcer. Curling ulcer is an acute ulcer which is produced with a stress. Stress induced gastric ulcers are like which often occur in the patients who have stroke or some other serious illness uh, which are often can be fatal. See curling ulcers can be fatal where the patient may develop that acute hemorrhagic speech, uh, location or there could be deep ulcers also where there could be bleeding. Now these conditions the patient may present with mainly the anemia or and the usual symptom would be burning sensation and peel after food. Typically, the typical of the gastric ulcer, so called the periodicity of the peptic ulcers may be seen. And this I would be considering as a picture variety of the shula. And in these conditions, one of the important issues is there is always a high risk of hemorrhage. So many times the patient may require an advanced intervention like blood transfusion or if there is a very severe risk of hemorrhage, I, would, I may be prescribing H2 receptor blockers, uh, uh, usual uh, uh, any of the drugs like H2 receptor blockers may be prescribed occasionally. Uh, maybe you may require that to stop the bleeding, yes, bleeding. in case of the cur uh, curling ulcers, possible potential curling ulcers in case of the stroke conditions. Patients of stroke who develop that hiccup as a symptom, they al always have that uh, most high risk of that developing this uh, uh, curling ulcer and to prevent that curling ulcer formation maybe our Sutishekara Karmadubar drug may not be enough to prevent that completely in such conditions we may give H2 receptor blockers as supplementing so you may require to prevent that risk of hemorrhage but once that risk of hemorrhage is over then we may manage with the Sutishekara Karmadubar the another drawback with these conditions is the recurrence rate is high. So in long run, there could be a issue as well. Then the issue of chronic gastritis. I think uh, uh, the time is up. So we will continue in the next uh, session with these chronic gastritis and changes and uh, our approach to the management. Uh, so if there are any questions, I will try to answer the questions and then wind up today. Like there are some questions like, uh, can you highlight differentiating points between the utility of Kamaduga and Sudhashekara? Okay, see when there is a severe burning sensation and uh, that Ushnaguna, then Kamaduga is better. If the patient has uh, uh, more of uh, uh, that uh, along with the burning sensation, the appetite is lesser, the bowel movements are constipated, Sudhashekara is better. That's how it is prescribed. Like. Mm -hmm. In continuous hiccups, what medicine see that a symptomatic treatment for hiccup is something is issue. So hiccups can be uh, produced due to multiple causes. But in a patient of stress like uh, the stroke patients whom we see in the clinical practice quite frequently, it's the possibility of the curling ulcer developing. Then the whenever otherwise hiccup is a sign of diaphragmatic irritation. So a patient with a persistent hiccup has to be investigated. It could be like a subdiaphragmatic abscess like conditions also can be caused for the hiccup. Masses in the abdomen can be caused for the hiccup. So I would not suggest anything as a specific remedy for the hiccup. That analysis of the cause is important. Uh, but in patients where you suspect this stress ulcer, it's the same. Like Then uh, how to deal with the gastric symptom, uh, other related cholecystitis and cholelithiasis. Okay, uh, that part. Well, uh, gastric symptoms produced due to inflammatory pathology is a point which we will be discussing in the next session. In the continuity of the same, we will have that discussion as a part. So, I will be treating that. Why Arogyavardhan is given? Because uh, that question, why Arogyavardhan is given? You look at the philosophy of Arogyavardhan. Arogyavardhan is indicated in case of the Ajirna also. That's the point. Eh? Right. Okay. Uh, so, if you look at the indications of uh, any of the yogas in the text, it's uh, uh, quite obvious, right? So, will this let us conclude? Okay.